Okay, so yet another different setup. Um, so if you've been following along, I was working on an oil painting uh, recently, and I thought it would be cool to do a recap of that oil painting um, and just kind of talk about it and talk about my process. Uh, so you can watch all the parts individually, and if you have been, you might hear me repeating some things here. Uh, but otherwise, hopefully there's some new information, or for, for those of you that are new, uh, welcome. Um, so I recently started this oil painting, which is a, a figure portrait of a girl, and I have the reference up on the screen as well. Um, and I'm just going to kind of talk about my process and my approach. So I lately have been working more a la prima or direct, which means I'm not really laying in any sketch with pencil or with charcoal or anything like that, but instead just directly attacking the canvas with uh, paint. Um, and I started this technique of like using a, like a, my brightest red, like not diluting it at all, just really using my brightest red to, to put in the initial sketch, which is what you're seeing right here. Um, and it's something that I, I really like actually. Um, I took this technique from uh, someone else who is on YouTube. Man, his name is, is escaping me a little bit, but it's something like Nicholas Ribeiro, something like that. Um, it, he runs a channel called Our Painted Lives, so you can find him there. Uh, but I saw him doing something similar. He plays a lot with these like really extreme, intense reds. Um, and I started doing this probably, I don't know, three or four months ago, and I've really been enjoying it because what can happen is as you're building up the painting in different stages, um, you will kind of get some of these reds that stay there. And we can even, you know, when we get to the end, we'll even see some of these reds that stay in here. Um, so right now I'm just kind of working out the anatomy, trying to understand, you know, where the eyes are in proportion, um, understanding the light a little bit, understanding the shadow. Um, in total, this painting is about four, four, five hours. So it's four different sessions and every session is, is more or less an hour, probably like a bit more. I would put this painting at somewhere in the, in the five hour, four to five hour range. Um, and so this is still this initial, you know, probably 15, 20 minutes that we're seeing right here. Um, and in this stage, you know, I've also done some prep. So I will say that, you know, sometimes like a true a la prima painter is uh, attacking the canvas and, and creating the painting for like the very first time. Um, so I actually drew this exact portrait twice before. So the first time I did just like a 10 minute quid sketch, which actually is what made me realize like, oh, wow, I actually kind of like this. Uh, I like this, the setup of this, of this portrait. I think I, I would like to do it in a painting. And then I did another drawing, which was not on, on recording, uh, where I kind of like really went into it um, in more detail and got myself ready for the painting. So I kind of did these two prep, uh, prep drawings. Um, so, okay, so at this stage, I've actually finished that initial uh, red lay-in, um, and it's looking actually kind of nice. So I have the eyes marked in nicely. I think the features are, are more or less well-placed. There's some issues that still need to be addressed that I'll address a little bit later, like the chin being too long um, and, and just kind of like, you know, side to the face, just some other like little anatomy issues. Um, but what I do now actually is I mix up I'm using a very limited palette at this stage. So I only have on my canvas that initial red. I have an ivory black and then a titanium white. Um, and I mix up just four values. And so with these four values, I take some of my biggest brushes, which are like a size 16 flat or a size eight round or a size 16 round, I believe, so somewhere in that area. Just whatever biggest brushes you have um, at your disposal that, that are reasonable, right, for the canvas size. Um, and I start to go in and just block the color. So I'm starting with the darkest color and I just kind of put in the hair and the side of the face. And then after that, I go in and kind of put in um, these like lighter colors. They're, this is like the mid, the mid tone, right? So I said four. So I have a, a dark, a mid tone, a kind of lighter mid tone, and then a highlight. Um, and then again, putting in the rest of these, uh, rest of these different um, color blockings. And so what you can see here actually that I think is kind of nice to highlight is before I had started this, there was actually kind of a decent little lay-in with just the red paint, like a decent little sketch. Um, and you can see that the painting is clearly entering what's kind of known as the ugly stage. And this is like very discouraging, I think, to first time oil painters, um, how easy it is to muddy up your canvas, how easy it is to kind of like ruin a drawing that was already there um, and how easy it is to, yeah, kind of like, you know, mess up your initial start, if even as good as it was. Um, but this is really the process of oil painting. There's so much of this kind of push and pull. Like right now I put in the eye and then I literally just wipe it out and just start over from scratch, just trying to get it to look a little bit better. Um, so that's just like one like micro example of the push and pull, but it's really happening over the whole canvas. Um, and it's, it's okay to fight with your paintings. It's okay to repaint an eye 10 times. It's okay to 
you know, uh, redraw a piece of it as, as many times as you can. And it's okay to be frustrated, by the way. It's, just, it's an incredibly frustrating process when you have something you like and then you enter this territory of, you know, am I fucking it up? Is it getting worse? And then you have to try and fight your way back. And if you don't win, it's incredibly frustrating. Um, but this is really the process of painting. It wasn't until I started to push through the ugly phase. Um, like I think, you know, in my early, earlier years, I was, and I think there's probably people that can relate to this. Uh, I was always giving up at the stage and, and just getting frustrated by the fact that, you know, oh, it was good and now it's shitty. Uh, but really like you have to learn to push through that, or at least I did. Like that was when my art became, you know, where I started to like increase in my levels was to like never give up on a piece and to really kind of push it through and try to take it um, to the next level. So where I'm at right now in this, in the time lapse is actually on the second day. So I've actually let that first ugly layer dry and, you know, somewhere, I think it was like around probably minute five or so is when it switches from day one to day two. Um, and so now I'm just kind of refining these shapes and, and going back in and one thing at a time. So for example, this eye, then I'll go to the other eye, then I'll start to do the cheeks, then I'll go back to the lips, just one thing at a time, trying to slowly, slowly refine and improve on those things that were, you know, in deeply in the ugly stage. Um, and so I'm also, what I'm also doing is like, I think I said that in the beginning that I start out with my biggest brush, right? I'm also shrinking my brush as I'm going through and every day my, I do, I do a few things every, so I did four days of painting. So first day, very limited colors, very limited palette and biggest brush as possible. Then by the time I get to the last day, I have a full color palette for, for what I'm using and I have my tiniest brushes. And this is, as I'm going throughout the painting, I'm kind of making that transition. And what that allows me to do is work from the big shapes into the small shapes. And I'm trying to kind of, you know, you want to try and leave some of those, ideally some of those big brush strokes that you make, big confident, you know, careless brush strokes you make in the beginning, take themselves through to the end of the painting. Um, because that helps capture kind of this like, you know, painterly flowy aspect that I really like, like this lightness of life. So I actually have one of these that I can kind of call your attention to, which is on the cheek. This is like with a very big brush on, on, on her left cheek. So the right side of the painting, um, I made this like, like semi dark tone underneath where the cheekbone should be, right? This is kind of like a known highlight, but it's just kind of this piece of structure here um, with a big brush. And I just carelessly had put it in, like and with, without too much thinking, you know, like, of course I'm, I'm making decisions as I'm doing this. It's not throwing paint at the canvas, but I'm kind of doing this, you know, just flowing into it. And this is a stro brush stroke that I really liked that ended up surviving all the way, you'll see to the end of the painting. If you keep your eye on that spot, I never touch it again um, because I like it and it works. And it came from this like kind of serendipity of using one of these larger brushes and then leaving that brush stroke there. When you start to work too detailed, for me at least, when I start to work too detailed or too fine, then I really start to kind of get lost in those details and you lose some of this kind of like flowiness that, that you get from, you know, loose painting styles. Um, so at this point, I've really kind of worked on all the features. And I think like, you know, if you really want to understand that push pull aspect, um, the best thing you can do is watch painters do it. And th at least th for me, that's how I learned it. So really anywhere from like minute, let's say six to now was just constantly pushing and pulling every detail of the, of the portrait. And even right now I'm still kind of pushing and pulling on the, on the lips a little bit. Um, and you know, I kind of had one of those, like, let's say like these like God days of painting where you just get an amazing flow, um, and things worked really well. And so, you know, I was super grateful to make so much progress on the second day. And a lot of those decisions actually carry through to the end of the painting. There wasn't nearly as much to fix. Um, okay, so this is around day three, where day three is starting. Um, so I let the painting dry fully. And so if you're an oil painter, the advantage there is that, you know, if your painting is fully dry, you can actually literally erase. And it will be like, it, when you put new paint on, it's sitting on dry paint. So if you wipe away, you'll get just what was underneath the left, which is like really great for, for saving mistakes. And so what I'm doing in this stage is you can see I'm beginning to add more color. So I said, as the days goes on, I'm adding more color and smaller brushes. And so you can see even the brush size has now shrunk a little bit. I'm using a size six and I'm starting to put in more color. I'm even starting to attack highlights. I'm trying to understand like, how can I kind of push form? Where can I kind of add detail? 
Um, and it, it, it's still the push-pull game, but it's happening more on a mic micro level, if that makes sense, as opposed to like pushing and pulling big shapes and the features and positioning of the features. I'm more pushing and pulling detail, starting to get closer to pushing and pulling details, pushing and pulling colors um, and aspects like that. Even at some point, you're pushing and pulling on the background, I would say. Um, so that, that's kind of an interesting thing that emerges. Um, so at this point, I'm about two and a half hours into the painting, I would say. Um, and it's really starting to like take shape. Like you're kind of getting into that stage where you're starting to, the end is in sight, right? Like there's not going to be huge, huge major changes. Like most of the structures are there, um, except for the ear actually, funny enough, that, <laughs> which is being added. Um, most of the major structures are there. So it's more now a matter of kind of like refining and trying to understand uh, the painting painting and what it kind of says to me and what it means. Um, I do think there's something kind of interesting with this painting, like, you know, there's, so there's some nice expressions that I like. So the first one is like, uh, every painting is a self-portrait. Like every painting is coming from you in some way, either like a reflection of your technical ability, your reflection of your state of mind, like what drew you to that particular subject, what drew you to that medium, every aspect of a painting is a self-portrait. So in that sense, this painting is me. It, it has to be me because it, it, it's coming from me. Uh, but I think also it's kind of interesting that it took really life of its own and is not exactly like some of my other work. Um, so I think it's like a bit higher contrast. I do have some high contrast work, but I think it's a bit higher contrast than some of the stuff I've been working on recently. Um, but I also think it's like more serious. Uh, it, it has, there's, it seem, feels, it has some of that lightness painterly aspect that I like, but it also has some kind of serious weight to it, um, which I didn't intentionally set out to do. Like in the reference, she's a bit serious too, but there's even, you could argue like a little bit of a smirk there. Um, and so, you know, it's interesting that I somehow found in that, in, in this painting, like a little bit of that intensity. And actually, as soon as I start to put in the highlights, the highlights in the eyes, I think you can kind of feel some of that intensity that's coming through, um, which I think is, is, is kind of interesting. Um, okay, so there's one other kind of uh, concept that I wanted to quickly touch on, um, which is something that I'm going to address in a little bit. So this is just like a little tip technique, if you haven't heard this before, um, that will improve your portraiture. So generally, there's actually some color scenarios that you can follow. So for me, I use um, a limited palette, which is known as the Zorn palette. And it was popularized by um, the Swiss, no, Swiss, Swedish artist, Swedish artist, I believe, Anders Zorn. Um, and he actually only used four different colors on a majority of his portraits. And these four, th there is evidence that he used other, other uh, paints for sure. Like there's blues that he got that, that's not manageable to get from this portrait, but or from this color palette, but for a majority of his work, he focused on on these four colors, and they are uh, titanium black, or yeah, no, sorry, <laughs> ivory black, titanium white, or flake white. Then he used vermilion, although some people have substituted in uh, cadmium red, which is what I use. I use cadmium red hue, and then a yellow, like a yellow ochre, is I, I believe what he traditionally used, and it's what I, I use here, um, and. The reason that this palette is so nice is it gives you access to like a bunch of different skin tones. So generally speaking on people, when you're painting portraits, you have on the forehead kind of like more yellow hues that come out. Um, it's a bit hard to see on me now because it's artificial lighting, but start looking for it when you're out in public and you'll kind of notice this. Um, and that's because the skin here is much thinner than other parts of the skin, other parts of the face. So there tends to be some of these yellow hues. So you can see in the painting, I have kind of pushed that yellow a little bit um, and that's giving it a bit more of a realistic aspect there. Then in the center part of the face, there tends to be more reds. So um, I, I just want to quickly call your attention to the fact that right now I'm pushing and pulling on that other eye, really trying to get it correct. Um, so this is even, this is the fourth day of painting. So I'm in the final hours the final hour, let's say, and still I'm pushing and pulling. And I probably redrew that eye, I would say 10, probably, maybe not 10 times, probably six or seven times if you if you rewatch uh, the, the video. Um, but sorry, sorry for that quick aside. Back to the colors. So yellow on the forehead, yellowish, right? 
And then in the center, reddish, because your cheeks and your nose have a ton of blood vessels, so it tends to give like a redder hue. And then generally at the bottom of your face is cooler, especially on those that have like five o'clock shadow, so you can really see it on my face here, or like a beard or something like that. You really get a lot of those kind of cooler tones. And it, it even transfers over to, to people who don't have, um, don't have five o'clock shadow to, to do, make that decision. Um, so by kind of following that, the kind of color orientation, you can work from that as a base. Like, of course, not everybody will follow that. And if you're painting that something that has like a green light or like a blue light or something like that, that could be all thrown off, like how those colors, um, how those colors, you know, exist. But it's kind of like knowing anatomy. Like it's something that you can start with. Like it's a place where you can start and then you can edit. Like then you can start to do your push pull. Like if you look here, I actually had a day where I put in way too much yellow in the forehead. So then I had to pull it back. But just by doing that, I kind of added more interest into the painting. Now, now I have added this kind of yellow tone. Um, and for me, I like to like, just as like one little thing that I like to do, I like to add yellow in the forehead. And then I also like to try and find some place underneath the head. So like here I put some little bit on the neck and then also on the collar of the shirt um, to kind of like unify a little bit these colors. Um, but okay, so we've more or less made it to the end here. Um, and I think I, I rambled enough and, and kind of recapped a lot of what we did. Uh, but overall, I think like this is a painting that I kind of enjoy. You know, I, I try, I talk a lot about, you know, not trying to stay a bit impartial, like try not to be too happy when you have a good painting and try not to be too sad when you have a bad painting um, and just kind of like view it as the work. And so, you know, I, that's overarching what I'm trying to, to think about, but I, I must say too, I do like this painting. Um, I actually signed this painting and I might end up putting it into a frame and, and you know, potentially submitting it to a show or a gallery or something like that. But let's see, let's see. I, I need to also kind of sit on it for a little bit and maybe uh, not look at it for a couple of weeks and then come back to it and then maybe even do another session that's like 30, 45 minutes just to see if there's some things that I need to improve or, or change. Um, that concept of fresh eyes, which I've talked on a lot. So anyway, this is the end of this, uh, this recap. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making this painting and making kind of the series associated with it. Uh, so there will probably be more of that coming in the future. So hope you did some art today too.